Welcome back. Nineteen forty-six. Nineteen forty-six. Boy, what a year for for Woody's writing. That same year, Woody got a commission from his producer at Folkways Records, Moses Ash. He was called, and Mo Ash sent Woody up to uh, Boston, Massachusetts, and Braintree near Boston, to soak up the details of a miscarriage of justice that was still burning raw in the American progressive psyche. It was a miscarriage of justice that um, the novelist John Dos Passos said uh, had taken the clean words our forefathers spoke and made them slimy and foul. It was a miscarriage of justice that the novelist Catherine Ann Porter called the never-ending wrong. And this was the trial and execution on a very dubious murder charge of two Italian-born labor activists and anarchists by the name of Nicholas Sacco and Bartolomeo Vanzetti. Sacco and Vanzetti. Now, this was back in 1927. For the previous seven years, people around the world were campaigning for clemency for them. The charge was uh, supposedly uh, the murder of a, of a payroll guard in a botched robbery at a shoe factory in Braintree. Um, now, all the, all the activity uh, on their behalf came to nothing, and they were uh, executed in the electric chair in 1927 in Boston. And the hanging judge it was a really nasty piece of work, an old Boston Brahmin, an old racist Boston uh, uh, Protestant old family called Webster Thayer. And this guy was amazing. He actually... During the trial, he actually pointed to, to Vanzetti in the courtroom and said to the jury, this man may not be guilty of the crime with which he's charged, but he is nevertheless morally culpable because he's the enemy of our existing institutions. As Kurt Vonnegut later wrote, word of honor, this was said by a judge in an American court of law. And after Sacco and Vanzetti were executed, Judge Thea was heard to have said on the golf course to a friend, did you see what I did to those bastards, those anarchist bastards the other day? Which phrase ended up on a banner hung over the coffins of Sacco and Vanzetti at their wake? Did you see what I did to those anarchist bastards the other day? Well, as far as Woody was concerned, this case was as much a racially motivated one as it was political. They were not quite white foreigners. They were greasy, dago, spick wop Italians. Judge Thayer had called them wops as well as radical rats. And Woody made a lot of connections between the executions of Sacco and Vanzetti and um, other miscarriages of justice against black Americans. As far as he was concerned, racism was racism wherever you found it, right? And later on, after he finished the album, Ballads of Sacco and Vanzetti, which finally came out in 19, uh, early 1960s, Woody said that the 12 songs on that album were 12 of the most, most important songs that he ever wrote. Trimming shoes. Van said he was a peddling man, pushed his fish cart with his hands. 
Sacco was born across the sea, somewhere over in Italy. Vanzetti was born of parents fine, drank the best Italian wine, two good men a long time gone. Sacco and Vanzetti, they are gone. Two good men a long time gone. Left me here to sing this song. Sacco sailed to sea one day, landed up in Boston Bay. Van said he sailed the ocean blue, landed up in Boston too. Sacco's wife three children had. Sacco was a family man. Van said he, he was a dreaming man, and a book was always in his hands. Two good men a long time gone. Sacco and Vanzetti, they are gone. Two good men a long time gone. Left me here to sing this song. Now Sacco earned his bread and butter, being the factory's best shoe cutter. Vanzetti spoke both day and night. Told the workers how to fight. Van said he docked here in 1908. He slept along the dirty streets. He told the workers organize. Now on the electric chair he dies. Two good men a long time gone. Sacco and Van Zetti, they are gone. Two good men a long time gone. Left me here to sing. This song If you ask me about this payroll robbery, two clerks was killed in the shoe factory on the street down in South Braintree. Judge Thayer told his friends around he would cut the radicals down. Anarchist bastards was the name Judge Thayer called these two good men. I'll tell you the prosecutors' names. Katzman, Adams, Williams, Kane. Judge and lawyers strutted around and they've done more tricks than circus clowns. Two good men a long time gone Sacco and Vanzetti, they are gone Two good men a long time gone Left me here to sing this song ought to be like me and work like Sacco and Vanzetti and every day find ways to fight on the union side for the workers' rights. I ain't got time to tell my tale cause the dicks and the bulls are on the trail but I'll remember these two good men that died to show me how to live. Two good men a long time gone. Sacco and Vanzetti, they are gone. Two good men a long time gone Left me here to sing this song Well, Woody was learning something pretty important, I think. It's all well and good to sing about victimization. That's really important to keep that memory going. But the other side of the coin is resistance and fighting back, you know? Now, he'd already learned that that was really important when it came to the Dust Bowl migrants who were being abused. You think of some of his songs like, I ain't gonna be treated this way, dust can't kill me, pretty boy Floyd, all that kind of thing, you know? So in the fight against Jim Crow, 
he turned to a great hero of his and memorialized her in song. This was the uh, uh, 19th century um, ex-slave and guerrilla fighter, Harriet Tubman, who escaped north and then went back south 15 times undercover to help other slaves escape along what they called the Underground Railroad, that, that system of safe houses to get them out of the southern states through the northern states where they weren't really that much safer because if they were caught they would be returned south thanks to the fugitive slave law. The only place they were safe was Canada. So she would conduct them all the way up to Canada where they were safe. They called her uh, a number of things. Um, her fellow uh, freedom fighter, anti-slavery fighter John Brown called her General Tubman. Uh, sometimes they called her Moses. But I think one of the names she liked best was simply the conductor. And as she said at the close of her very long life, she said, I never run my train off the track and I never lost a passenger. Slavery, I was sent. I'll tell you of all the beatings and the fighting in my 93 years that I have spent. I helped a field hand make a run for freedom when my 15th year came rolling round. Boss man caught him in a little store in a little slavery village town. The boss made a move to catch that field hand So I jumped in and blocked the door Boss man hit me with a two pound scale iron And I fell black down on the floor On a bundle of rags in our little cabin My mother she ministered to my needs it was then I swore I'd give my life's blood to fight to turn my people free. In 44, I married John Tubman. I loved him well till 49. But he would not come and fight beside me, so I left him there behind. I left Bucktown with my two brothers but they got scared and ran back home so I followed my northern star of freedom and I walked in the grass and the trees alone in a barn loft and I slept in a haystack stayed with my people in slavery's shacks they said I'd die by the boss man's bullets but I told them I can't turn back so it was early one morning the sun was shining I finally reached my free state line I pinched myself to see if I was dreaming For I could not believe my eyes Well I went back south and I got my parents I loaded them into a buckboard hack we crossed six states and other slaves followed and up to Canada we made our tracks. 
One slave got scared He tried to turn backwards So I pulled my pistol In front of his eyes And I said get up and walk To your freedom Or by this fireball you will die When John Brown hit them At Harper's Ferry My men were fighting right at his side And when John Brown swung upon the gallows It was then I hung my head and cried Now give the black man guns And give the black man powder To Abe Lincoln This I said For you've only crippled the stake of slavery But we got to fight to kill it dead Then we faced the guns of lightning And the thunder broke our sleep And then we waded through the bloody rainstorms And it was dead men that we reaped Yes, we did walk through that zigzag lightning But it was worth the price we paid For when our thunder had rumbled over, we'd laid slavery in its grave. So come and gather round my deathbed. I will sing some spirit songs. I'm on my way to my greater union. Now my 93 years are all gone.